I'm going to bring these giant Pokemon cards to life with miniature worlds that you can look through fully lit and leaping out at you. This video is brought to you by the Anycubic Photon M3 3D printer. More on that later in this video. G'day everyone, I'm Jazza and I've been documenting my recent re-addiction to Pokemon cards. In the last six months, I went from opening up my first battle box starter pack to having bought like five or six booster boxes and an absurd amount of other just miscellaneous things. Anyways, let's get to the projects you clicked on this video for. There are videos by channels like North of the Border who have made dioramas out of Pokemon cards. And then inspired by that, Dave on Tabletop Time created this 3D giant Pokemon card. I saw this and was jealous. And I was like, Dave, I'm stealing that and doing that myself. Bit more. Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. To be precise, I used the help of a laser cutter to cut three boxes that are the shape and size of the large Pokemon cards. I also laser cut an interior box slightly larger than the frame of the Pokemon card frame itself, in which I'd be building the little dioramas. And I wouldn't need that big box until the end when I put it all together. So let's start off with Squirtle. The other thing I'm doing with the interior box is having one of the sides be made out of clear acrylic. This will enable me to put a light inside the box and create some internal lighting. And in this instance, I thought it made the most sense to have the light at the top. First things first, I needed to figure out a way to soften the light coming down from the top. It was time to lay in my curved skybox made out of that plastic card and the baking paper. Already you can see that diffuses the light pretty nicely and with a color tint, ugh, this is gonna be great. Next, it was time to build the diorama, the scene that would be behind Squirtle, which of course has to be a watery scene. So I decided to cut out a little separate square of wood that I could sculpt terrain onto, but pull it out and work with it freely without messing up my clean little skybox. I mixed up a batch of sculptor mold with some concrete pigments to darken it to an earthy color and created a bit of a diorama scene, a platform that Squirtle could stand on and a river running behind him. And here is my raw 3D printed Squirtle tested out in the scene to see if the scale looks right and that looked pretty bloody good. Once my little earthy sculpture was dry, it was time to give it coverings. Putting a watery PVA mix through the river and putting down some slightly larger pebbles and rocks first before covering it all in sand. That way the larger little rocks would stick first and definitely have something to grab to where the sand would give it most of the coverage. Then I went through and did the same thing on the surface areas, but this time with some really vibrant grass mixes. Left to dry overnight when I came back and went to brush the rest off, most of it stuck really, really well. So now it's just a matter of dressing my little Squirtle set, which includes painting the sky and filling that scene a little bit. Now, I wanted to do a bit of an airbrush of a blue for the sky, a bit of a gradient in the background, and using the variety of my Copics, airbrushed in a blue sky gradient. And with the skybox done, it was time to construct the rest of my scene cutting up some different woodland scenic trees and gluing them in place and then unfolding some cotton buds and gently gluing those on the back of the skyline all the way to the front where I could cover up the edge of that acrylic. Taping up that front lip of my little diorama with clear plastic tape, I mixed a little cup of UV resin with some alcohol ink that I just dropped in, mixed thoroughly and with a pipette just poured strategically throughout my little river. Applying the UV light to cure it as fully as possible, all that was left to do was dress the rest of the scene and then of course, paint Squirtle. So giving it a base coat in that contrasting color and slowly working my way up to the blue, then airbrushing on that turquoise color, I had a really great Squirtle foundation to start off with. Now obviously a lot of this project is craft techniques and miniature diorama building stuff. But the hero of the build is the Pokemon itself. And that Pokemon was made thanks to the miracle 
of 3D printing. The Photon M3 3D printer is the best entry level printer I've ever been able to show off to you guys. So if you've been interested in some of the projects I've made, including these great Pokemon cards, all of that is possible if you grab yourself a 3D printer like this. The Anycubic Photon M3 is a resin 3D printer. It has a 7.6 inch LCD screen. The way it works is it's UV resin. It cures with a UV light. And the Photon M3 has a 4K monochrome screen, meaning it's really high resolution and high quality. It's a fast printer. It's got a lot of community support because a lot of people get this one. And with max print size of seven inches by six inches by four inches, this 3D printer will actually handle most hobby projects that you could think of doing. I mean, with those dimensions, you could easily 3D print the whole diorama and the Pokemon if you wanted to. I'll link to the Anycubic Photon M3 in the description. Go check it out. And if you're interested in 3D printing, this is the place to start without hurting your wallet too much. I'm really grateful to Anycubic for sponsoring this video, supporting the channel, and making making a project like this possible. Makes this look pretty flat and boring now, doesn't it? All right. <sighs> Bulby time. This time I thought I'd have undulating hills behind Bulbasaur and have him nestled a little bit lower in the scene. I wanted it to be like he was found in a little forest glade. Sculpting those hills out with the sculptor mold and the concrete color compound mixed in, I set aside to dry and came back to dress it up. Mixing green paint with my PVA water mix of glue, I gave the whole thing a really heavy base layer in a very fine, rich green flocking. And when that was dry, I laid down another mix of thinned down PVA and applied static grass. This stuff is so fun. If you use the static grass applicator and poke a little pin or a bit of metal into the glue, it runs a static charge through the water and makes all of that static grass stand on end. It's really satisfying. And then I went over the whole thing again, applying really small static grass and it actually stuck and poked out in really interesting ways that made the grass look more shrubby than grassy, which I love for this. Now with that set aside to dry, it was time to paint the skybox just like I did with the previous one using the Copic airbrush system. This time I went for a really orange sky behind, mixing into a gold. I wanted this to feel like a beautiful sunrise or sunset scene and thought the orange would contrast nicely with the rich greens throughout the scene. And to create more of that contrast, I wanted to put lots of trees throughout to sort of break up the visual, much in the same way I did with the clouds and the Squirtle one. With all the trees in place, I wanted to fill the forest floor with more than just grass. And that's where these awesome laser cut plants from Gamers Grass come in. I've never seen anything like these before. We've worked with them over on the Tabletop Time channel and they're absolutely phenomenal. Cause as you'll see, they're really simple to make. You just pull them out of their sheets, like the laser cut on flat sheets that are colored, bend them into place to give them an organic look, glue some together if you want to thicken them up a bit and simply dab a drop of glue on the bottom and stick them onto the forest floor. And with a variety of bracken and some leaves and a few colored vibrant purple plants, it really doesn't take much for these little bits of dressing to bring the whole forest to life. And this works pretty well. All that was left was to paint our little bowl saw buddy. Now I don't like to play favorites, but I definitely have a favorite. Charmander is my favorite and I saved my favorite to last. Who was your favorite by the way? Is was And was this your starter set or did you have a different starter set? Cause in my mind, cause this is my starter set, everyone had the same starter set, but no, a lot of you watching this probably had P Piplup, 
and and Ch Chimcha. Go let me know down in the comments. I want to see the Charmander fans out there. Let's show them who's boss here. But I'm genuinely curious. Like, what is it for everyone in a different way? Because Pokemon for me is uniquely mine through my experience. But everyone has a different experience. Let me know yours. But speaking of different experience, I wanted my Charmander card to stand out in a different way. For Charmander, I wanted a light from underneath. And I thought there would be a really cool way to do a scene where there would be lava or something fiery underneath him. And what better way than in a cave? Using a whole bunch of Woodland Scenics plaster cast rock molds, I filled them with plaster of Paris and left them overnight, releasing them the next day and snapping them up to put into place with hot glue inside my little box to create that scene. I didn't want it to feel too square, so I made sure to pack out a few different areas with foam and just to sort of pick some asymmetrical applications of these rocks and made sure to take my time to make something that feels really organic, but would also catch the light from the underlighting. Now I made a bit of a mess of that clear acrylic at the bottom, but I didn't mind because I had a spare. So I was just focusing on the rocks at this point. And then when I was happy with those, I could take that clear acrylic off and take all of it out for a bit of a base coat, including a little extra piece I had ready for Charmander to stand on. I made sure to spray paint the whole cave in one direction when it comes to the lighting, making sure that the orange and yellow was coming up from underneath. That would be further accentuated with the lighting that I can add later. With Charmander's little rock glued in place, there really wasn't a lot of set dressing to do on this one, except for one very important thing, the lava. Following a similar initial method to the river I did for Squirtle, I mixed up a UV resin cup with a bunch of yellow alcohol ink, poured that in place, and then with a couple of drops of orange, tried to swirl that through to create a lava effect. Now that all blended pretty quickly, and I didn't really get the lava effect I wanted, but realizing that that resin wouldn't mix well with acrylic paint, well then acrylic paint it was, because I don't want it to mix well. I want the streaks to be visible, and when mixed through with a toothpick, create that sort of textured lava look with those lines of the heat flowing through it. And that seemed to work perfectly. With a UV cure, all of that was hardened and set in place, and there really wasn't a lot of set dressing in the cave to do because the lighting would really bring it to life. So all that was left was to add the real life in the cave in the form of a Pokemon. I just want to say I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I have cherished this whole project. I love it. Thank you to Dave for making this and inspiring me to make a bunch of my own. What this leads to, I don't know. Do you want me to make a whole deck worth? Do you want me to battle with 3D giant Pokemon cards? Look, I'll level with you. I will do it, but if this video gets enough love. So you know what to do. Click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, because I love creative projects and I also love Pokemon, so that tends to sort of keep re-emerging. And if this video gets enough traction, who knows? what could happen. Let me know what you want to see in the comments. But that's all for the future. For now, let's enjoy the result of my giant 3D starter set. Here's your gym badge for watching this video. There you go. Well done.
There you go, we did that together. You're born to be a great winner. You're born to be the very best. You gotta be a master! Pokemon! Joke, joke.